Richard, we'll turn to you. Um, so I, ac- I have some slides, <laughs> and I will, let's see if that, okay. I just wanted to mention that um, in looking back, that irreproducibility uh, was exacerbated by some factors that, um, and to some extent, it may have been good that these factors presented themselves because it forced us to focus more on the fact that we had a problem and we had been able to ignore it before because of relative high funding rates and and an easier background for science. But the, after 2003, when the doubling of the NIH budget ended, and all of science, went, in the U.S. at any rate, underwent somewhat of a recession, I'll just mention parenthetically that in China, they doubled the budget every five years for 30 years. So every five years, they doubled their budget, and that went on for 30 years. And that really, it's, it's a difference in the sense of how science um, funding is increasing. But... Um, so low grant success rates, high grant cuts that were happen- happening simultaneously meant that you had much less money for each of your studies, which meant that you thought about how can I cut corners. Scientists have, have and continue to have long and busy waits for research grants, for protocol approval and publication. And there is uh, intense pressure to increase performance metrics on researchers and editors. So editors often are compensated to some extent or rewarded if they can increase their journal impact factor, even if they're a journal that's not supposed to mention uh, journal impact factors. Um, uh, Editors are often seen as as helping um, in that way. And I want to go about where to check for reproducibility or following uh, guidelines or checklists. Um, You can do it by making grant applications protocols and then judging those protocols for for their ability to do this. Um, I'm, and I know much of the scientific community is not happy with the idea of turning uh, grants into protocols. So I did not put a star on that as a preferred um, mechanism. In a general strategy to um, uh, follow, sorry, um, you, you can continue our general strategy grant applications in which um, this PI could promise to follow some sort of guidelines like consort. They could, um, we could also ask reviewers to evaluate the published papers which serve as a background for each application for their reproducibility or their ability to follow uh, um, guidelines. I like the idea of just being transparent and their ability to uh, be transparent about um, procedures. Um, I worried initially that this would really increase the burden on uh, reviewers. Uh, Just before I left the Center for Scientific Review, we did a survey of reviewers and asked them on their last grant application that they reviewed, did they look at any of the original literature on which that grant was was based? Did they go back and check um, the actual papers? And 90% of the reviewers said that they had. So um, it may be a a small but significant imposition on them to uh, suggest uh, that they look at some of the original papers or one of the original papers uh, for this issue. But I think it would be very helpful uh, for um, researchers themselves would be much more careful on the uh, application, on the publications they list on their grants, especially if they think that uh, reviewers will take a look at that publication for this process um, and will help um, reinforce reproducibility There's also protocol review by IRB or the Animal Care and Use Committee. Now, we've heard already of the objections of adding additional uh, burden on those committees and possibly lengthening out the time for which they uh, uh, give approval 
uh, for application, so I did not put a check on that. Um, another place is publication review by journals, and of course uh, this has to be done. Um, I agree with the journal editors that it should not be the only place this is done or emphasized, um, but I think they play a critical role uh, in ensuring uh, that uh, strong papers are the ones that get published, and particularly for the um, uh, single name journals. Um, I also say recommend use of guidelines or checklists, um, as Shai points out that perhaps checklist is a better um, um, term, and, but they need to be coordinated for efficiency. We, if we have a lot of them floating around, um, we do need to make sure that uh, we focus on what's really important. Uh, as he pointed out. I think we need to keep funding and publication space available for exploratory discovery and replication studies, um, that scientists need some space uh, for play and exploration. And if we just fund only for protocols, um, that will get squeezed out. And I think a lot of creative ideas uh, will not get um, um, become available to science. If you can't do that, uh, I think there should be, should be reported, but transparently, so you know uh, that they aren't um, as, uh, they have significant weaknesses uh, compared to uh, other studies. And um, finally, as uh, I think was just mentioned by Malcolm McLeod that we must have explicit measures of success to evaluate changes made uh, to the science ecosystem, and that these should include workload costs and replicability of important findings to see if the changes we're asking for actually have the effects that we want. We often find out that they don't have the effects we want, and so we should be very cautious about it. That's it. Well, thank you very much, Richard.